Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am, together with Doris, you'll be hearing from her in a few minutes, with another chit-chat about the Faber stories that have been published in 2019 to mark Faber's 90th anniversary. And this one is Edna O'Brien's story, Paradise. I have never read anything by Edna O'Brien, and I am really excited that I have finally corrected that literary mistake. She is fascinating, so she's still alive, she's 88 years old, her most recent novel, which I have on my Kindle, just haven't gotten to, is from about two or three years ago called The Little Red Chairs. But she is most famous for her first novels that are a trilogy. The Country Girls, 1960, followed by The Lonely Girl, 1962, and Girls in the Married Bliss, 1964. So those novels, which are about sexually liberated Irish women, caused such a scandal in Ireland, in Catholic Ireland, that she left her native country, and went into quote-unquote exile in London where she still lives. She has since much later been welcomed back and celebrated in Ireland, but she was persona non grata in Irish literary circles for a long time afterwards, and Catholic nuns burned her books, and Catholic priests denounced her. Badge of honor! I watched an interview with her. I will put a link in the show notes. It's quite an interesting interview from a few years ago, maybe 20 years ago, where she talks about her writing process and her identity as an Irish writer. Uh, what calls her to writing is the desire, the compulsion to write emotion. And that resonated with my experience of the first 15 or so pages of the story. And also very much her identity as an Irish writer. A lot of her stories apparently, her, a lot of her fiction is set in her, her home county, County Clare in Ireland. That is a very important place for her creative imagination. But the one of the interesting things about this story is that it's not set in Ireland. It's set in an unnamed foreign location where the unnamed young woman, I assume she's young, is on vacation with her older, rich, new boyfriend, a much married and divorced famous dude, we don't know yet why he's famous, and all of his rich friends who are sizing her up on this luxurious vacation in one of his mansions in some foreign place. It might even be on an island, I, might, I missed that. And she is really insecure the vulnerability and insecurity that she feels is rendered so palpably on the page. And I relate to it, not because I've had a rich, older male lover much divorced, but I can just imagine what it feels like to be set among your new partner's many friends and meeting them all at once and feeling them judging you. That is one of my worst nightmares. It doesn't have to be my partner's friends, but I don't like being in any such a social situation where I'm meeting a whole bunch of new people, especially if... I feel inadequate. Yeah, it's really, I love the writing, Doris. I think it's really, really great. And I'm also wondering if I'm ultimately going to love this story as much as I might love other of her fiction because it's not set in Ireland. Maybe in the next, in the rest of the story, she will be remembering her Irish life. So uh, who knows? But as it stands, the way the story is beginning, I feel the emotional atmosphere of her being cast among these people she's not comfortable with and she's not really sure how much her older rich famous boyfriend dude loves her certainly it sounds like they have a good sex life and that's an edna o'brien specialty in her fiction which intrigues the heck out of me he wants her to take swimming lessons and she's not at all interested in swimming or the sea. And as I got to, I read up until the top of page 16, and they're just going on his boat or yacht or whatever, and she is not interested but feeling very self conscious about wanting to fake being interested because that's what he wants. So there's a whole bunch of gender dynamics and stuff, and I think so far it's starting out great. What did you think, Doris? Hey, Sean. Yes, Edna O'Brien sounds like such a fascinating woman. I am intrigued and definitely interested in more of her works after um, the first part of this book. She really has an atmospheric writing about her that is very subtle, uh, but very powerful at the same time. 
I'm just feeling so claustrophobic about her in this new relationship and having to meet all these rich acquaintances in mass like that. Oh, horrible. I just feel horrible for her. And I think that the swimming lessons and her um, attitude toward the sea really plays into that claustrophobia so well. I just feel um, something building that I'm nervous about for her. Uh, and the thing that really intrigued me and, and connected me to what you said about um, her cutting edge sexuality and her original trilogy back in the 60s uh, is that subtleness in this book. I don't know if you noticed, but when she's first getting ready and she picks up the hand soap ovaries, I thought, that is such an odd way to describe a piece of soap. I mean, I, I get it. I could see the shape that the soap was, but it just triggered that oddness that kept my mind open to that thought. And sure enough, you know, they're at the dinner table and she describes one woman glowing and she must have been getting a lot of semen. And then the dinner table was in the shape of an egg and I think she's going somewhere with that. So paired with, you know, the sexual tension and then the nervous claustrophobic feel around the water, I'm just like, ooh, what's coming next? And your comment off film about page 16 has me wanting to be done with this filming already and see what in the world's about to happen on the very next page. So here I go. Hey, Doris, so how about that page 16, hey? I thought it really sucked. Yeah. I finished the story this morning. I almost loved it. I certainly really, really liked it. I gave it four stars. You uh, uh, referred to some of the fabulous sexual, sensual, erotic imagery, and uh, I agree, and that continued swimming throughout the, the sea or the pool of this short story. Two sentences. What brought it up temporarily to a five-star read was the letter that she wrote to her mother. I thought it was, even though I hate italics in my fiction, I thought it was a really brilliant letter. It just, it just anchored, anchored the story deeply. It just kind of pulled all of the kind of fragmentary uh, unhappinesses and disappointments and anxieties of her into a really deep place about her family. And I loved this sentence. She's describing the rich people that she's stuck with on this island or whatever. In a nutshell, they brand you as idiot if you are harmless. Now that is a sentence I will not soon forget. And then closer to the end, the, uh, the quote-unquote intimate scene, emotionally open, quote-unquote emotionally open scene between her and her asshole, older, rich boyfriend, where he has a moment of pseudo-vulnerability, and she thinks, she thought, probably he is as near to me as he has been to any living person, and that is not very near, not very near at all. Yeah, I really like this. Now, I had to take a star off because I thought the shallow, deep metaphor was way too heavy-handed and kind of cliched, but it's probably still a four and a half, but rounded down because, yeah, that was a bit too heavy-handed for me. This is my first uh, Edna O'Brien story. I'm looking forward to reading her more Irish-centered fiction, which I think is pretty much everything else she has ever written except for this particular story. Uh, very impressive. What did you think? Hey, Sean. Uh, yes. <laughs> Page 16. That was quite a dramatic climax in the story there, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I am so glad that you read that quote from the letter to her mother. That one hadn't stood out as much to me, but when you read it, I was like, yeah, that was really deep. Um, and that was also quite the turning point for me in the story as well. Uh, but for me, this was more of 
uh, probably a three and a half star read in that I liked it, but I didn't really like it, as she said, uh, because, and I think that is just personal interest. So I tend to not be quite as interested in stories that delve into the wealthy and trying to fit in with people that are essentially not nice people. So I just was like, when she wrote the letter to her mom about back at the farm and what her mom would think of these people, I was like, come on, go back to the farm. I would, I would find that much more interesting. So yeah, this was a three star, but one of those three stars that I would totally recommend to people that were interested in the topic. I think she's an excellent writer and I'm very much looking forward to reading another one of her works, perhaps another buddy read along the way. I would really love to see how she wrote um, the Irish setting. Yes. So look one up for us, Sean. I know that's your forte and yeah another another solid for me so thanks so much for watching everyone and we'll be back soon with sally rooney gonna get sean on the hype train <laughs>